The brand new Marin Elroy just came in and we're here to take a first look at it. I have to give you guys a massive heartfelt thank you. I am so grateful to my amazing viewers. So many of you guys reached out to Marin and said, hey, I'd really love it if you would send Hardtail Party and Elroy so he could review it. You made this happen because you requested so nicely and explained why they sent this. So I'm super grateful. And Marin, you're awesome for sending this. Thank you so much. Let's get started on this thing. Oh my goodness. The first thing you will notice is this paint job. When you see one of these in person, that is ridiculous. So cool. I'm not a fan of black bikes, but this is amazing. It's got this deep sparkle to it. It just looks incredible. Killer job on the graphics, Marin. A lot of people pronounce Marin incorrectly. They call it Marin. And this company's not Marin, it's Marin, the birthplace of mountain biking. This has an MSRP of 2569. Let's walk through the specs. Chromoly steel triple butted frame. We've got Marin branded bars and stem. We got a 35 mil stem. A Marzocchi Z1, 140 mil travel. I'm so glad they went with that, not like a 160. 140 is a pretty awesome travel range, even on a super aggressive bike. We've got 29 by 2.5 Asa guys up front and in the back as well. They're Marin branded rims. The specs online say Shimano MT420 four piston brakes. I get so confused with Shimano's model numbers. It's really hard to keep track of all of that. We've got 203 mil rotors in the front, 180 mil in the back. Unfortunately, these are the resin only rotors. Once again, I hate seeing that on bikes in this price range. They work, but it's sure nice when you upgrade to better calipers and stuff to not have to replace your rotors. So, bummer about that. 150 X Fusion dropper. We've got water bottle bosses here and here. You do not have any of them on the bottom of the down tube. Everything is externally routed. Thank you, Marin. All cables are external except for the dropper, which goes in the seat post here. Fantastic. We've got Dior 12 speed on it with FSA cranks. It's got a Dior 12 speed shifter. And the Dior 12 speed is probably my favorite Shimano group set other than XTR, but they're pretty close to me. I really like the way it shifts. It's a little bit heavier. There's no aluminum back here. It's all steel, but I think that leads to a better feel when you're shifting. It just feels a little more solid and less brittle. The headset uses integrated headset, which I haven't seen on a steel frame before. The bearings just drop right in. That means that you can't run an angle set on this, unlike some of the other steel bikes. So this is the first bike I've seen with an integrated headset on a steel frame. So the most compliant frame I've ever ridden was the Marin Pine Mountain. It was so soft and I loved it. And this appears to have the same exact rear end of the Pine Mountain too. Look at how thin these seat stays are. That means they're gonna flex more and it's gonna be a more compliant ride. So does it really make a difference if they use these thin tubes and these dropouts? Look at that. One hand. That flexes so much. And that's why we love steel frames because they have that nice springy supple ride. And when they keep them this thin and use these dropouts, man, that should be a really compliant ride. That's wild. For some reason that bugs a lot of people when I like compliant bikes and they say, just get a full suspension. There is a huge difference between a compliant, wonderful frame and a rigid hardtail frame. The chain safe protector looks pretty cheap. It'll probably work, but you're not gonna pull it out and be like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. It looks budget. Marin also decided to go with a 30.9 seat tube. It keeps the rear end from being oversized and overbuilt and keeps it supple. At least that's what a lot of companies claim. And their thin tubing here completely adds to the soft rear end feel. This thing has super aggressive geometry. It's a downhill enduro trail bike. It's just meant to shred hard. The closest bike that I know of to this is the Kona Hanzo ESD, which I reviewed and loved. 
and we're going to compare it to it a lot because the price points are very similar and the geo is fairly similar as well. We have a 63 degree head angle with a 140 fork. So this is going to be even slacker than the Hanzo ESD which is a 63 with a 150 fork. So essentially it's a half a degree slacker than that. So the Elroy comes in two sizes, a regular and a grande. This is a regular and they recommend it for anyone 5'5 five five to 5'10 five and the grande is for people larger than that. And these are extremely long bikes. This is a 480 reach on a size regular. When I first found out about the sizing of this bike, I was super worried because it's super long. I've never ridden a bike with a reach even close to this. The longest I've ridden is a 465 reach on the Hanzo ESD medium and this is a 480 reach. That's super long and I'm a little bit worried. But they have it paired with a 35 mil stem so that should shorten a little bit. And I trust Marin. I'm going to give it a try and I'm in the recommended height range for it so I'm actually really excited to try this. This bike is obviously not an XC race machine. This is meant for steep, aggressive terrain. 63 degree head angle, 480 mil reach, 435 mil chainstay. This does not have sliding dropouts like the Hanzo, so you can't change the length of the rear end. But I think for how long the front end is, it makes sense to not run a super, super short rear end. We'll see. This has a 65 mil bottom bracket drop, which makes me worry a little bit about the 175 mil cranks, but we'll see. I'm always nervous to share my thoughts on these first looks because bikes often ride completely different than the numbers and even appearance suggest. So this is just off the cuff information to educate you more on the bike, but this is not a review. Stay tuned for the onboard ride review when I ride this thing. It's gonna be wild. This thing is unlike anything else I've ridden. The Geo is super progressive, super modern. Did they go too far? Did they go far enough? We are gonna find out. We have a 78 degree effective seat tube angle. I love steep seat tube angles, especially with long reaches. If this had a slack seat tube angle and the seat was back here, the seated effective top tube would feel even longer and I'd just be super stretched out while climbing. When we steepen the seat angle, it brings us closer to the bars while climbing, but then when we stand up, the reach is nice and long for descending. Some of you love my channel because I'm brutally honest, and some of you hate my channel because I'm brutally honest, and if I don't like something, I say it, and you get your feelings hurt because it's something that you love. I'm sorry, there's no point in doing reviews if I just love every bike and say everything's great, so I'm going to nitpick here. I feel like most Marins in general are specced with pretty cheap parts, especially when compared to other bikes. So for another $130, we compare this to the Kona Hanzo ESD. With that Hanzo, you get an XT shifter instead of a Dior shifter. You get SLX 12 speed. I actually like the feel of the Dior 12 speed better, but SLX is a higher end Grupo. You get race face cranks instead of FSA cranks. You get race face bars and race face stem instead of house branded bars and stem. Also, the Hanzo ESD has race face wheels, not house brand wheels. You get a better dropper lever. You get upgraded brakes. I just think for that 130 bucks, component wise alone, you get a lot more bang for your buck out of the ESD. So if you just compare bikes based on component spec, I think the Hanzo ESD is going to win. But don't do that. That's the wrong way to compare bikes. It's one factor to look at. But the way that the frame rides is what really matters. I'll pay an extra six or seven hundred dollars for a particular frame ride over another bike with the exact same specs because the frame is everything. Every other part of this bike can be swapped out except the frame. The frame's the heart and it's what makes it ride the way it rides. Most people can't even tell the difference between drivetrains, so don't focus on that. Focus on the way the frame rides. I guarantee most people can feel the difference between two different frames based on how they ride, how stiff they are, and the geometry as well. And knowing how the Pine Mountain 2 rode with a very similar rear end, I'm extremely excited for this bike. It has the potential to be one of the most supple bikes I've ever ridden and one of the most aggressive bikes I've ever ridden. So yes, that's a little bit harsh and I'm sure Marin doesn't want to hear that, but that's why I do reviews. That's the purpose of reviews. If all my reviews just loved everything, it wouldn't be a review. It would be a marketing thing and it'd just be, hey, here's the info. Reviews are meant to distinguish bikes and so I can't just make every review a glowing review and love every single bike. I know those of you that have this want me to just love every little millimeter of it, 
but a review should be critical and it should point out the differences between bikes. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad bike at all, but when compared to its biggest competitor, the Hanzo ESD, for 130 more, you get a lot better spec on the Hanzo ESD. But you also get a very different frame, and I think this frame is going to be special enough to overcome that, but we'll see in the ride review. Alright, it's time to weigh this thing. It came in at 33.58 pounds, and these FSA cranks aren't known to be light. I think you could swap the crank, stem, and bars and lighten this up a fair amount. Now we're not trying to build a super light bike, but you do feel it on long days, especially when you're pushing 33, 34 pounds on a hardtail. Huge thanks to Marin for sending this out so early so we could get some eyeballs on it. I love companies like Marin that are willing to think forward and into the future and push the boundaries of what's possible. I was talking to a different manufacturer the other day about their bike and they said, we have a brand new one coming out. It's super progressive. It's got a 68 head angle. And I was just like, I'm sorry, that is not even close to progressive, even on an XC race bike. It's, it's just not. And seeing this bike from Marin, we're able to see a whole new world of what's possible with hardtails. So thank you, Marin, for pushing the boundaries. Thank you for making this and being wild and not just making another cookie cutter hardtail like so many other companies with a 67 degree head angle, 430 chain stay, and just safe everything. I cannot wait to shred this thing. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you'll be notified when I do the onboard ride review. That's coming soon. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.